As they say, anything can happen in WWE, and after you see these moments, I guarantee you will agree. Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels' match in the 1987 Survivor Series was one of the most intense moments in all of wrestling, and definitely not a laughing matter. However, a month before that, there was definitely some fun to be had. On an episode of Raw, Bret Hart took on Triple H in a match. The two legends were putting on a great show for the fans, but apparently, it wasn't enough. Someone in the crowd decided to throw a huge paper airplane into the ring. Honestly, I'm impressed at the aim that person had. The plane went right under the bottom rope and landed perfectly between the game and the hitman. When Vladimir Kozlov made his WWE debut, the company had big plans for him. The Moscow Mauler was a legit Sambo and kickboxing champion, so he had some big accomplishments. Unfortunately, not all of it translated to WWE. During a tag team match, Vladimir teamed with Santino Morella to take on the Usos. Kozlov was supposed to make a big save, but that didn't happen. <laughs> I love the fact that Vladimir yells before he gets stuck on the rope. Ironically, R-Truth had the exact opposite problem. After the 2011 Royal Rumble, seven wrestlers had a mini Rumble match on Raw. Two of the participants were John Morrison and R-Truth. The two were fighting and ended up dangling from the top rope. Morrison pulled himself back into the ring, but Truth had some difficulty getting back inside the ropes. This is a perfect visualization of you versus your sibling who is perfect at everything. We love you, Truth. Now I guarantee you have never seen or more appropriately heard this during a WWE match. In 2010, AJ Lee took on Nikki Bella on an episode of NXT. This was the first time the two women faced off, and while they would eventually become icons of WWE's women's division, this match was remembered for a different reason. A vast virus database has been updated. What in the world is going on? <laughs> I guess someone forgot to turn off notifications before the show started. Sin Cara is one of the most unintentionally funny wrestlers of all time. The faceless one was known for constantly botching moves, especially in his early WWE career. You could almost do a video just on funny Sin Cara moments, but I think this is one of the funniest. In 2012, Sin Cara took on Curtis Axel, who was still known as Michael McGillicuddy at the time. Short Money in the Bank 2018, the Raw Women's Champion Nia Jax had some stiff competition when she had to defend her title against Ronda Rousey. However, it turned out that Ronda's biggest opponent was gonna be herself. Shortly after the match started, Rousey was trying to stand up, but fell backwards and landed outside of the ring. Luckily, she wasn't hurt, but I know for a fact Ronda wasn't feeling like the baddest one on the planet in that moment. In tag team matches, wrestlers have to be holding a tiny rope near the turnbuckle in order to be tagged in. This can be annoying since it can make it hard for wrestlers to reach their partner. However, Eddie Guerrero came up with a genius idea to solve this. Latino Heat teamed up with Booker T to take on the Bashams during a match on SmackDown. The referee reminded Eddie that he needed to be holding the tag rope to become the legal man. Eddie was not happy about this, but then he thought of something. Guerrero moved the tag rope off the turnbuckle. It was a 1000 IQ move, but the referee wouldn't allow it and moved the rope back to its original spot. In 1999, The Rock and Mankind had one of the most iconic matches in Royal Rumble history. The two legends fought in a brutal I Quit match. While it was pretty vicious, there was one moment that was pretty funny. Rock and Mankind fought all over the arena and he used just about anything as a weapon. The most electrifying man in sports entertainment wanted to give his opponent a rock bottom through the announcer's table, but the table had other ideas and fell apart right before Rock hit his finisher. Making it even funnier is what happened 14 years later. In 2013, the Brahma Bull returned to the Royal Rumble for a WWE Championship match against CM Punk. It was just a normal match, but that didn't stop Rocky and Punky from going extreme. The two stood on the announcer's table, and Rock tried to hit CM Punk with a fast rock bottom, but the announcer's table wasn't having any of it and collapsed. I seriously think there's some kind of curse that prevents The Rock from hitting his finisher on tables at the Royal Rumble. Rey Mysterio 619 is one of the most popular WWE finishers of all time. It seems pretty devastating too, but during one match, I think Rey may have actually hurt himself more than his opponent. While wrestling at a non-televised WWE show, Mysterio set up Kane and Chris Jericho on the middle rope. The masked luchador ran in to hit the 619, but missed the rope and fell straight to the floor. Ray's tag team partner, Shawn Michaels, had to step in to finish the match, and thankfully, Rey Mysterio was okay. Here's proof that we're living in a simulation. Shorter and shorter by the day. Every opportunity's critical, and Sheamus oh, got caught oh. in the ropes. That's only one of many real-life glitches we've seen in WWE, and by the end of this video, you'll agree we're living 
in a simulation. Cody Rhodes was facing crime time in a tag team match when the Young American Nightmare tried to go for a moon. Randy Orton is a robot and I have proof. During a backstage segment, the legend killer just randomly shut down. I don't need an excuse to watch him for one minute. Who was supposed to watch him? It's not about who was supposed to watch him, it's where is he? He can't be by himself. Where is he? I think Austin Theory is a robot too. During a match on SmackDown, Theory started flexing and his back looked a bit unnatural. He's loved this business since he Scott Steiner is such a genetic freak that he glitches into the ropes. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. During a match on NXT, Sami Zayn's character model just went haywire. There's opportunity up to the top. Oh! oh Zayn kicked out again. Whoa! What the? Also, something went very wrong here. <laughs> What's up with the way this referee falls to the mat? Oh, no. <laughs> this ref also seems like he has some bugs. Oh, oh goodness. Went for a springboard off the chair and nailed the official referee Nick Patrick in the corner. WWE really needs to get a patch out for this. And oh, oh, oh yeah, that 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 cover. We all know that if you give a computer too many commands at the same time, it buffers. This is exactly what happened to Bobby Lashley. Stairs all lined up. Like next level brutality. We got directing traffic. Cesaro is so strong that he can cause his opponents to clip through the ropes. <laughs> Sting's pretty powerful too. He's so strong they can defy the laws of gravity. Sting! Sting! This powerbomb, on the other hand, clearly needs to be patched. At the D-Generation X In Your House pay-per-view, the ropes weren't quite up to code, and Ken Shamrock learned that the hard way. How about that? Oh. How does this work? How about the fact that FTR's got an American flag? Glitches affect commentators too. Just listen to what happened to poor Renee Young. Jeez, I can't talk. <laughs> you're all, you're I don't know what just happened. I think I just had like a personal. Taz also had a pretty bad glitch with his sound bites too. Speaking of AEW, they have some ragdoll physics going on. And. Oh my god! On a 2005 episode of Raw, WWE forgot to load in Triple H's shirt, resulting in the King of Kings taking off an invisible one. Or maybe it was just a John Cena shirt. The game isn't the only one to have wardrobe malfunctions. Stone Cold Steve Austin's vest malfunctioned, causing him to get stuck. And look at Phineas! Unfortunately, the Texas Rattlesnake would also have some difficulty at the ropes, but luckily, Triple H was there to land a hand. This legit looks like a glitch from a WWE 2K game. Whoops on top again! And so does this. Damn, Joel! Damn, German and just slid! There's only one word to describe this glitch. Rump and telegraph! Oh, yeah! Damn! Whoa. Miro, aka Rusev, might need some WD-40 because he's looking a bit rusty. Miro saying it's game over for Sean Maluda! Either WWE needs to patch their turnbuckles or Hulk Hogan's vitamins really work. Still confused, the genius still writing in the corner! Oh, no! Maybe it is Hogan, because Shawn Michaels also had some bizarre physics when he fought the Hulkster. Okay, still don't believe that wrestling is a simulation? Watch this. Oh, Nelly Nelly. These interactions between WWE wrestlers and fans are hilarious. After losing the WWE Championship to John Cena at WrestleMania 26, Batista was filled with rage. This led to a series of rematches, one of which was at Extreme Rules. The animals started manhandling Cena, and the fans, especially the younger ones, were not happy, and they wanted Batista to know it. I hate you, Batista. I hate you too.
It's even funnier hearing a kid say this after seeing what adult fans do when Batista is around. In the weeks leading up to WrestleMania 26, Batista wrestled Kofi Kingston and destroyed the Jamaican sensation. As he was leaving, the animal approached a fan and actually scared the man. Come on, how do you not laugh after seeing this? If you know Bret Hart, you know that one of his trademarks was giving his shades to a fan as he made his entrance. Usually this fan was a kid, and it was a very cool moment. Well, one time, Christian decided to do the same thing, but with a twist. Well, walking to the ring on an episode of Raw, Christian handed his glasses to a young boy sitting in the front row. I guess he had second thoughts because Christian decided to take back his shades. There is a special place for people who laugh at this. In December 2020, Seth Rollins became a father when he and his wife, Becky Lynch, welcomed their daughter Rue into the world. Sometime later, Rollins was in a tag team match with Dolph Ziggler against Bobby Lashley and Damian Priest. The Monday Night Messiah was taking a break on the outside when a fan said this. <laughs> the Undertaker is usually dead serious, but he can be pretty savage. In 2001, The Undertaker was taking on the hardcore champion, Rob Van Dam, in a, well, hardcore match. As such, the two left the ring not long after the match started, and Taker and Van Dam began fighting all over the arena. Some RVD fans tried cheering on their hero, but Undertaker had a pretty good comeback. Oh, oh my God. This isn't the only witty comeback The Undertaker had for the fans. On an episode of Raw, Taker came out to confront Ric Flair. While the dead man was talking, the fans were giving him the what chant. The phenom was getting a bit annoyed and decided to pull this. I tell you what, why don't you say what if you like to sleep with your own sister? In 2012, Daniel Bryan was in his no phase and would get upset anytime fans used his old yes chant. This came to a boiling point after Daniel Bryan won a match on SmackDown. A fan in the front row was chanting yes, which prompted Bryan to get right in front of the man's face and yell no. no, 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 no. Someone who's a master of destroying fans is Kevin Owens. While beating up Seth Rollins on Raw, a fan began heckling KO and this is what he did. Screwing your sister, you stupid girl. Another interaction Kevin Owens had with a fan was so funny that it actually caused someone to break character. While wrestling Rowan Reigns at a non-televised WWE show, KO had Reigns in a headlock. A fan was doing some trash talking, so Owens used the opportunity to fight back. You're a Roman Reigns couldn't help but laugh and actually had to cover his face so that people didn't see him breaking character. In the lead up to the 2012 WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match, all six participants faced off on Raw in a six pack challenge. Justin Roberts was doing ring announcing for the match and got a little tongue tied when he was explaining the rules. The first superstar to call to, to get a pinfall or submission this might sound mean, but how do you mess up this badly? On Raw in 2006, Trish Stratus was defending her women's championship against Ashley. Mickie James was in her stalker fan phase, so she accompanied Trish for the match. James couldn't stand seeing her hero be defeated, so she got into the ring and went after Ashley. This caused a disqualification, and Ashley was the winner. However, Lillian Garcia, the ring announcer, said this. Here is your winner, and still WWE Champion, Trish Stratus! Wait, 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 why is Trish the winner? Not only did Lillian announce the wrong winner, but she somehow got the Women's Championship mixed up with the WWE Championship. How does that happen? Christy Hemi learned the hard way that you don't want to mess up Austin Aries' ring introduction. On Impact Wrestling, Aries and Bobby Roode teamed up to take on the bad influence. Christy Hemi was doing the ring announcing, and she must have got her announcements mixed up. Introducing first the Austin Aries' reaction to Hemi's botch was insane, and he forced her to reintroduce them correctly. Well, at least Christy Hemi won't make that mistake again. If you can name this wrestler, then you already know more than Michael Buffer. Buffer is a world-famous re-announcer and did the announcing for WCW's main event matches. For some reason, though, he never got Bret Hart's name correct. Bret the Hitman Clark! Bret Hitman Clark. Did no one in WCW seriously ever tell Michael Buffer he was saying the hitman's name incorrectly? 
At the end of 2015, the Usos received the Slammy Award for Tag Team of the Year. Lillian Garcia must have thought they won an award from somewhere else because she said this. At a combined weight of 479 pounds, Grammy Award winning Tag Team of the Year. WWE even replayed the botch when they returned from commercial break. However, the next week, Garcia made sure she got it right. They are the Slammy Tag Team of the Year. In early 2022, Xavier Woods was sidelined with a leg injury. About two months later, it looked like Kofi Kingston was going to take on Rich Holland in a match. However, Kingston surprised everyone with the return of Xavier Woods. Or at least it was supposed to be a surprise, but the ring announcer accidentally ruined it. And his opponent accompanied to the ring by Xavier Woods from Ghana, West Africa, weighing in at two... This one might be the funniest ring announcer botch ever. Just listen. Weighing 280 pounds, the junk girl. You can literally hear just how confused he got. During the first night of WrestleMania 37, five tag teams competed for a shot at the Women's Tag Team Championship. It was a turmoil match, and at one point, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke were in the ring with the Riot Squad. The fight ended when Liv Morgan managed to pin Dana Brooke. I guess the re-announcer wasn't paying attention because he said this. The, the Riot Squad has been eliminated. No, I believe that was an error by our, it, it, it was an error. WWE fans are sometimes just as entertaining as the wrestlers. Oh, He's there! And He's they... there! Before John Cena made his iconic WWE debut on SmackDown, he competed in non-televised matches before WWE went on the air. During one such match in 2002, Cena took on Shelton Benjamin. I guess one fan didn't like it and decided to make his feelings known in a mean but funny way. Everybody is afraid of public speaking, so when Jack Swagger spoke for the first time on ECW in 2008, he must have been a little nervous. Unfortunately for the All-American American, the fans weren't going to give him a warm welcome. I guess some things never change, do they, Tommy? In late 2016, Neville turned heel and joined the Cruiserweight division. It was a good decision, and the High Flyer soon became the Cruiserweight champion. However, that didn't stop the fans from making fun of him. While addressing Titus O'Neil, a fan showed this at the King of the Cruiserweights. It's a fantasy. This one might be more tragic than funny, but I thought I should share it. After successfully defeating Evolution at Payback, the Shield was staying strong the next night. Or so it seemed. The group was confronted by Triple H and Randy Orton, leading to Seth Rollins' shocking betrayal. This caused one fan to shout what we were all thinking. In 2012, Kane and Daniel Bryan were put in their iconic anger management storyline. At one point, their therapist, Dr. Shelby, had the two try each other's preferred food so they could learn more about one another. Bryan was given meatballs, leading to a fan shouting, Besides being a wrestler, Chris Jericho is also a singer with his band Fozzie. Jericho's group shares the same name with the Muppets character, Fozzie Bear, which angered one WWE fan. At the 2007 Judgment Day pay-per-view, Shawn Michaels took on Randy Orton. Due to a backstage attack earlier, Michaels was in no condition to compete, but did so anyways. The match ended unceremoniously when the referee decided that HBK could no longer compete. It was so bad that Michaels' wife came down to the ring and the showstopper had to be structured out. As he was leaving, a fan said this. If you don't know, Michael's wife used to work for WCW as a Nitro Girl. A week before their iconic SummerSlam match, John Cena and Daniel Bryan came face to face in the ring. Cena told Bryan that he had defeated Bryan's peers, which included Shawn Michaels, The Rock, CM Punk, Batista, and many more. Bryan had this to say. You talk about all those people like they are so much better than me. It's funny hearing fans shout things at wrestlers, but it's even funnier when fans start shouting at each other. At TLC 2016, The Miz interrupted a backstage interview with Daniel Bryan. As the segment wrapped up, we heard a pretty hilarious discussion. Enjoy. Go back to real world.
The 20th anniversary of Raw featured many stars from WWE's past. This included The Rock and Mick Foley reuniting backstage. Unfortunately, the moment was interrupted by Vicky Guerrero. The fans hated this, and one individual took a page out of The Great One's playbook to express how he felt. This is my show. Not your show. <laughs> Not your show, but my show. <laughs> On Raw in 2017, one fan was very excited to see Goldberg. See what this man did by hitting the video on screen. 